Hello and welcome to the new Wrestle Vomit podcast, the newest extension of the Vomit series of podcasts. As always, I'm your host Mac Taylor, and today we have the new uh, a new panel for this podcast, <laughs> which they are conveniently located in one spot. <laughs> we have the Cunninghams, Joe and Amber. How are you guys doing? Good. Doing good, man. Excited for this. Yes, we have. A lot of wrestling to discuss as we're going to talk about the week in WWE, AEW, and some news. And there's a lot of news revolving around one particular person. Uh, one of Joe's favorite people, Alistair Black, has been in the headlines a lot this week. And he did an interview with Renee Paquette. Did you guys listen to that? Uh, I actually saw the, the video clip of it, but mm -hmm. I didn't actually watch it. There's a lot of stuff in that interview. so I'm sure there was. <laughs> we have a lot to get into, but we'll start with, with Monday Night Raw, the first thing that comes on, and the show that has been lacking, but this Raw wasn't terrible. Uh, I will give it some credit. So we start out with the tag team Battle Royale, we, which I, I love that they're trying to do something with the tag division took them like five fucking months, but we're finally oh, yeah, going to do something been, with it. The tag, the tag division has been not what it should be, man. Uh, so Joe, we'll start with you kind of, what, what are your thoughts here on the, on the Royale where the Viking Raiders will end up with the win and just kind of give me your thoughts on the teams and whatnot. So <clears throat> I'm actually glad the Viking Raiders won because as you know, uh, Ivar was out for over a year. Um, and they didn't really do anything with, uh, with Roe. Um, so I'm glad that they're back together and they're putting them in another title picture. Um, you know, the RK bro thing, I still, <laughs> I still think Randy is, is a fucking Viper, man. He's going to turn on Riddle at some point, And, uh, I think it's going to be coming sooner than a lot of people think. Um, just cause we all know how Randy Orton is, man. He's, he's hard to be trusted. Uh, he's the lone wolf, um, you know, the other teams, uh, I'm trying to think who all was in it. Miz and Morrison were in yeah. it but only for that comedy bit with the slow-mo. Yeah. <laughs> Lindsay Dorado was by himself. Yeah. Lucha house party. I mean, yeah, like it, it just, I don't know, man. It kind of seems like a lot of shit has just kind of been thrown together. Yeah, this was an excuse just to have New Day, RK Bro, and the Viking Raiders. Like, they didn't yeah. give a shit about the other teams. Right, the like, you, you didn't need to have those other two teams in there. You know, it could have just been, like, a triple threat tag team match. Morrison you know, and Dorado should have been cool. one team. Well, yeah, they could have <laughs> done that. <laughs> Johnny Drip Drip. Uh, <laughs> All right, Amber, give me your thoughts on it as well. I'm so glad the Viking Raiders won. They're going to – well, they're not going to get what they want, but – it's nice to see him in the picture. Yeah. What would you think of Omos's uh, mic abilities? <laughs> he Dude's barely to do. that. He just he doesn't say much, you know. Yeah. He's he, he's not really been. All I heard was about Elias yet. dropping out of the match the week before. Yeah. Or was that last week or this week? Well, yeah, this week that Elias and Riker had a match against each other. Right. You didn't see that but he haircut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Riker's looking fire, dude. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Omos, I, I I really hope that soon they'll drop the tag belts just so we can not have to deal with Omos on the mic or right. the ring. He can just stand on the outside like he always does. Like I'm totally yeah. fine with him doing that. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, we got to see that that was a fun promo with RK Bro, like Riddle talking about how Randy doesn't wear a shirt or pants and <laughs> or made him shut up that was fun the new t-shirts are out and on yep. com, me and me and dj are gonna get some nice <laughs> uh even if the team doesn't last long enough uh hey dude look at look at broser weights man yeah, exactly done and done and riddle on nxt i wish i would have got one of those this fucking reminds shirts me of when you got the tomaso and johnny gargano shirt when it came oh yeah out. the diy shit. Like, we're getting the shirt it's not gonna last yeah it was over yeah. As soon as you got the shirt. I think it was before you got the shirt, actually. They split up. No. And it delivered, like, right after. No, oh, maybe. I don't know. Well, I got it, though. That's a, that's a critical piece in, in wrestling history. Dude. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> uh, but this was one of the better matches of the night, too. I gave this three and a half stars because I was like, you know what? Like, I, I love Battle Royales anyway. It's a very easy watch. 
Right. Uh, and the Viking Raiders got a lot of good hits in. Like they they fucking lit them up. In the Dude, they they're they they're so good, man. Um, both of them just have incredible in ring abilities. They're I fucking love watching them, dude. I still wish they'd go back to the War Raiders, but you know that's just me. <laughs> so then we got to Riker and Elias. For some reason, they split them up after jobbing them out to everybody for for like six months. Like yep. this, this is going to be captivating television. Uh, the match was super short, very stupid. Ended in a count out. I gave it one star. What about what about you guys? What do you think? Uh, again, it's just. It's. I give his haircut a five. <laughs> <laughs> Riker is obviously balding, you know. So I, I think it's good. a good look for him. But when when was the last time that Elias was put into anything that was like major? It's been a while, dude. He like, beat Corbin at WrestleMania two years ago. I think. Yeah. I think that but was the like, last time he was in any, and even that was dumb. That was Corbin. And that was at the time when he jobbed the reins for like a year. So yeah. El- Elias hasn't been useful since his like, I don't think ever. Actually, I don't think he ever has been useful. No, not really. I don't think he's ever held a title. No. Um, you know, he's, he's usually there for the comedy of getting beat up. That's exactly his yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, and then Riker, they 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 took him away from his team, and then we're like, and you also do what he's doing and job out to people. There we go. Yep. Now we have two of them. And that and that sucks too, man, because Riker is a very good wrestler as well. Yeah, I've watched uh, him since you know. TNA when he was Gunner. Yeah, he's he's a big dude. You know, he's 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 powerful. He's got you know he's got some decent moves. Um, see guys like him, man. They just. If they don't have anything to do with them, okay, we're just going to job you out for however long until we figure out what to do with you. If then, any, yeah, I was like, they're and then they just release them. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the trend of WWE. How yeah. did Elias and Riker keep their jobs over people like Murphy and Alistair Black? See, that's, that's what, what I'm saying, dude. I don't know. Elias is more of like the can't really say comedy. He is a funny guy, but. His his whole you know singing wannabe rock star gimmick. Really, he's on Spotify. Well, I know he actually does it, but it's it's he's some... more successful in music than he is in wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, is that Mickey James? Maybe. Too, <laughs> well, look, we have Rick Boogs now. We don't need Elias. We don't need <laughs> Elias. We got Rick him. Boogs <laughs> shredding on him. shredding on the guitar, man. Uh. So yeah, that I gave that one star because I, it wasted my time. <laughs> then we got Ricochet yeah. and Humberto Carrillo. Uh, it ended in a double count out because basically the U.S. title is just, I don't know what's going on right now. Well, I think they're probably going to set that up for like a triple threat match. On the pre-show Maybe. of Hell in a Cell. Well, <sighs> Yeah, I could I see them know. doing that. You know because, how that's how it works. Because it's Ricochet. It's Ricochet <laughs> and Humberto and, Carrillo. Uh, what they've done with Ricochet is a fucking joke as well. I'm surprised because, he's still employed too, honestly. Right, but I did read yesterday that they are getting ready to release another wave of people. Could be Ricochet. He could be in that. I don't list. know how the hell Lucha House Party still has a job either. Right, like they're they're cool, you know, they're fun. Hey, you know, Lucha, but and they're good wrestlers. Don't get me wrong, um, but but they're know, not they're not important. They're all. not. They're really not. Like they're not going to be in any kind of major picture. No. anywhere in the near future, you know, no. you got guys like Ricochet, and even Humberto. Man, he's a badass wrestler. He's good. He could be, they could move him up into something big, you know, but they're probably not going to because they, they focus on the people that they want to be the face of the company. If he was going to be a big deal, they would have made a bigger deal about how huge he was when he came back. Like yep. he put yeah. Work. Yeah, he did. Cause he, he totally came back that. jacked, dude. And they didn't jacked. That. They didn't make a big deal. Out and of they're like, no. and there he is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Beat you real quick. Yeah. But no, that was, uh, we did actually see some of that match. Um, I mean, it, it was, was a decent match. match. It just ended in a, in a nothing finish. And Seamus was, has this like the, the clear mask, like the broken the nose. Mask. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. The U.S. title picture, if you compare it to like the IC title picture, the U.S. title is getting. No it's, it definitely 
it definitely takes a back seat to the IC title for sure. Which I was That's like the, the low tier title. And then you got the IC title. That's like the mid car title. And then, you know. But it was exciting for Seamus to get a title. and like. Well, yeah, like, but he, you got to think he's been a world champion in the past. Yeah, but that was a long time. Yeah, that's when he debuted. He won the WWE title. Yeah, no, fuck. I don't even know how long he's been in WWE. I now. think 2010 is when he debuted. So he, 11 years. Yeah. Yeah. But they've pushed him. You know, he's he's been in sporadically. It, it, yeah. It's not a major push. He's, he's like a transition champion a lot of the times. He's like the Miz. Yes. In a way. Yes. Yeah. Good old Miz. <laughs> yeah, I gave that two stars just because it didn't really do a whole lot did both guys are capable of having a five-star match but they didn't give them a lot to work with right well unfortunately main roster wise anything that ricochet is involved in is just gonna be exactly <laughs> whatever they throw together now back in the <laughs> nxt days five-star matches all the fucking time dude because and even when he, when he first got to the main roster, when him and Black first got there, and they were doing like three shows a week, like they were killing it. They were, man. And then Vince is like, "That guy, put him at the bottom of the card." Yep, yep. And then Alistair okay. was was soon to follow, man. Yeah, it's a shame. Uh, then we got Jeff and Cedric Alexander, which is a, yep. a was a really fun match, actually. Yep. But, but I, I wish they gave him more because obviously they jobbed Jeff out to fucking Jinder Mahal, which pissed me off because like, yes. where, like where's Jinder Mahal been? Yeah, he's uh, been gone. Uh, so yeah, solid match. Uh, they did, they did the sneaky finish where uh, Cedric's mocking Hardy, and then he just snuck in a twist of fate real quick. So I yep. gave it three stars, and it's good to see Jeff doing something. Yes, sir. Jeff Hardy's uh, obviously one of the best that's ever done it. So, uh, you know, he he's not somebody that you want to job out, you know, because no. if he, he's a if legend, they, he is. And if they keep doing that, then he just he needs to leave and he can go fucking join Matt and fucking AEW. For everything. Just saying, just Matt's Matt's already there, you know, <laughs> Jeff, Christian's there. Christian's there. Exactly. I'm like, we don't know how long Jeff has left. You know, he's been doing this shit for a long time, man. And, I, uh, I'd say like six seven years maybe and that, i don't that, even know if he's got that long dude that that's if he doesn't get injured again because he did have that exactly. injury a couple years ago that really uh really fucked yeah. up. cedric alexander that's someone that they they've definitely squandered i mean that guy when he was in the cruiserweight oh, division he dude, he's so killing. good he's so good and like the lumbar check dude that is a badass finisher man they could definitely do something with him well, they had they had him in the hurt business, and they were doing just fine. And then yep. they were like, "And we'll get rid of that and replace them with a bunch of ladies." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it doesn't make Ashley. He's a new Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> he's a twenty twenty one Godfather. Come out, I'm like, oh, he's got the hose. He's a Godfather now. Yeah. But like, it's the same girls. Like they're they're keeping this table of women. Yeah. They've yeah. got more screen time than Jeff Hardy, and that pisses me off. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Man, that sucks, well, dude. Jeff Hardy could do like a cross dressing thing. <laughs> if they put Jeff with Lashley, I'm done with Raw. That would be that would be that would be dumb, dude. But again, it's WWE. They love doing stupid shit all the time. I can see it. And then they do that stupid thing where they take the champion and the challenger and make them tag against somebody. So they had Rhea and Charlotte against Nikki yeah. Cross and Asuka. Why do we keep doing this? We knew that was going to fall I apart. Claire was pregnant. Shouldn't she not be wrestling? Well, it was a false Remember? pregnancy. That's why she was out, out of mania. But I think it had more to do with the Andrade situation. I think they were kind of kind of yep. pulling her a little bit for it. Yep. Yep. But I don't know why. They, they, they do this every time there's a major title match. Like, let's put them in a tag match. And then one turns on the other. And yep. because obviously. Yeah. Uh, like, people can't see that coming. I mean, come on now. Yeah, and they did that thing where, like, Nikki Cross will have a surprise partner. I'm like, it's going to be Asuka. And yep. then it was Asuka. Yep. Who the fuck else was she going to get? Nobody. But it's cool because they have a history together. They used to wrestle together. Yeah. Because Nikki did a whole thing on Instagram or something. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. I mean, they could have maybe thrown Alexa in there, but, you know, she's doing the whole. Well, no, she's doing the thing with Sha. I, I, she's fine where she's at. Yeah. Uh. I just feel bad for Nikki Cross because, like, they did that whole thing where, like, 
can she last like two minutes with them? I'm like, she's a decent wrestler. It's not, yeah. it's not like it's Hornswoggle out there <laughs> running around. Like, come on yeah. now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she is a good wrestler. She was, like I said, she was doing good in NXT when Sanity was, you know, a thing. Mm. And I want then, them to bring back Crazy Nikki. Yeah, like the Crazy Nikki. Uh, the FedEx trucks here. Um, yeah, the whole Crazy Nikki thing. They, I don't know why they ever scrapped that. Uh, that fit her very well. Yeah, then they reformed Sanity and TNA. Yep. And now with they're doing the, just fine over there. Yep, with Young and whoever else. Yeah. We don't watch TNA, but whatever. <laughs> you do. I, I, you know I, I, about I, I, it. I check in on the people. I check in. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not like, I don't watch it every week, but I'm like, oh, hey, what's that over there? Uh, especially now that uh, Omega's over there defending their right. title. I have to yep. kind of keep an ear to it. See, I gave this match one star because I hate when they do this thing. And then they do the, the screwy finish where Charlotte just leaves everybody to the Wolves. Yep. And uh, then Cross and Asuka celebrate like they've just won a major yep. match. <laughs> like, hey, we did it. We, we did something. Of Charlotte. Like they're Beat dancing the on the announce yeah. table. And I'm like, it's it's not that big of a win, guys. Like, it's really not. It's really this not. is gonna go nowhere. No. <laughs> then we get no. the uh thing we can never we also cannot stop doing, which is contract signings. Yeah, right. Uh, where Drew tells the story of a spider in a cave. I was, <laughs> I was like, did they give him this or was he they're like Drew to say something Scottish? And yeah, he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Just be Scottish. No, I'm sure that's that's creative's dumb ideas. Uh, then Lashley comes out with the hoe train. Yep. <laughs> and Drew cuts the table in half with a sword. With a sword, yeah. Yeah. Because I thought he was going to flip it. I'm like, who's going to flip the table? And they cut it. I'm like, oh, okay. I've never Which seen is, that. I mean, it's different, I though. I karate chopped it, but he actually hit it with a sword. Yeah, he did. But it, it's kind of, that's kind of a different cool element to throw into it because most people just do the table flip you know yeah. dude grabs a fucking sword and just ah, like that's that's fucking I, cool i thought it was funny that he's bringing it to the ring i was like oh is he gonna stab him <laughs> no of course you can't get that gonna no. stab one of the hoe tray <laughs> <laughs> no. sorry ladies you have to make a kitchen. sacrifice <laughs> uh so yeah i I, 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 it's also, I just hate we, we have to do a contract signing for like every major title match. It's just like, yeah, we did it's, it. It's something's going to happen. Do something different. They could do something different. You know, you don't have to have one of those every major Everything title. Digital now. Couldn't match. they just do it on their phone? They don't have to do Like it a anything. tablet, like sign yeah. here. <laughs> Go backstage, take like five minutes. Yeah. At most. Yeah. Then there'd be some sort of like, Drew would hit he drew cuts the tablet in half with the yeah. sword. Less exciting, but still there. <laughs> uh then we got Monsoor defeating Drew Gulak, and it meant absolutely nothing. Just just them no. trying to get Monsoor some some uh some momentum. Yep. Remember when Drew Gulak had a good rivalry with Daniel Bryan? That oh was man, that give was, him some momentum. That was great, man. They had they had some great matches. Um all of them were, you know, just yeah. technical beatdowns. Well, the, the guy's a great technical wrestler, yep. but they're, they're never going to do anything with him. No, he's, uh, you know, didn't they have him and, like, Kurt Hawkins, like, teamed up or something for a minute? Or right, I think but, right before Hawkins. Oh, no, Hawkins was with Ryder right before he left the company. So. That's right. That's what I was thinking of was Zach Ryder. Now look at Hawkins. He's in TNA with the winning streak. Yeah, that, wow, good for him. Yeah. Bravo, Kurt. You're finally finally being used somewhere. Congratulations. It only took like a decade, but we, we did it. <laughs> Poor guy. So yeah, f- fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we got Kofi and Riddle in the main event because I guess we just double up Kofi all the time. Like the guy's yep. going double duty all the time on Raw. Yep. Uh, and Riddle just wanted Orton to come out and watch his match. That's all he yep. wanted, and he did. <laughs> but he lost, so Orton just left him there on the floor. Yeah. Again, going back to it, man. I don't trust Randy. Like this is gonna, this is gonna be something that happens very, very but, soon. You know, they could easily just try and make Riddle heal, which would be really bad. I think. But I could well, I, I like that they do. Like Riddle has the aggressive sides. Like mm-hmm. when that pops out, then Randy's like, "Ooh, I like that." But yeah. then Riddle goes back to being goofy and Randy's like, ah, oh, damn it. Yeah. But like, I don't know. I like this team. I hope they keep, I'm surprised it's gone on this long. I thought for sure, like a 
couple weeks ago. He was going to yep. RKO him yep. in the ring. So yep. hopefully we can at least get a, a title shot. At least give him a title shot. Yeah, and I think. If you want to uh, break it up, whatever. I think they, I think they could do it, man. I it's, thought they were going to win. I didn't think the Viking the Viking Raiders winning shocked me. Uh, yeah, but, it, but in a positive way, I was like, "Hey, good for the Viking Raiders. Yep. Get in there." Yep, I'm. I am glad they won because when I saw the teams, I was like, "Well, it's either Riddle and Orton, or it's going to be the Viking Raiders." And also, I love Kofi and Xavier's ring gear. Uh, finally, they're doing uh, the Power uh, Rangers yeah. thing. Because yeah, Ronda dude. Rousey tried to do it, and I'm like, no, don't you fucking take Power Rangers from me, Ronda Rousey. I'm not going to root for you. <laughs> the New Day does it. Yeah, she did a White Ranger yeah. here for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it, we don't have to talk about it. It's fine. Uh, but, Co- but Kofi and Xavier, they're doing, yeah. the, they're doing the Lord's work. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and before like, that, it was the whole Mortal Kombat thing. Yeah, yeah they had that for a while. That was, that was cool. It was. They cool. always have badass ring gear, dude. Like, Mania, they had that they were. I can't remember if it they had was the Buccaneers. Year. No. Or, what uh, year was it? They did the whole Gears of War thing. Oh, yeah. That and, was fucking cool. And then they did Dragon Ball Z at WrestleMania yep. 14. Yep. They, 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 they kill it every time. Yeah, they do They do some great stuff, man. Great and stuff. And then to cap off Raw, we had uh, Baszler on Alexis Playground uh, running from Lily, <laughs> who is rumored to be Paige. Really? Okay, that... That that that's the root. That's the big rumor floating around is that Lily's going to eventually show up and it's going to be Paige. That would be cool. I'd be all right with that. I don't see them doing it. I see them, I see them getting like a Chucky doll version of, of Lily. Yeah. I mean, for a little bit, but like eventually, it's going to be a person. But watch it be someone really stupid. Yeah. It's going to be Hornswoggle. Oh. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be Hornswoggle. He's blonde. He is, but... We'll just put a wig on him, throw him in there. <laughs> With little it's going fucking to be Hornswoggle. Pigtails. They're going to be like, you yeah. need to go on a diet. So you can get Ch- Chase Shayna around the ring for a while. Yep. And That's WWE right there. That, yeah. that is okay. WWE. They owe me money now. They're going to steal that. <laughs> Good oh, luck. No. You know how many, how many fucking things me and Ben have came up with? They're like, oh, we, they should do this. We would do this if we were in creative. And, you know, it's all. Bri could write a better script to Raw than some yeah. of these people. Yes. But what? speaking on that point, because um, I have read some of the shit that, uh, you know, Alistair was talking about. Yeah. And one of the things that I read was he was actually giving props to the creative team. Yeah. He mm-hmm. was saying that they work really hard and, you know, there's, you know, some of the nicest people and that, you know, that may be the case. We're not there. So we don't know, but from a fan perspective, you know, and I think we all agree on this, their booking fucking sucks and their creative has been shit lately, especially on raw, especially on Which raw. Which is so weird. It used to be the best show. Raw is like at, at the bottom, you know, of, of WWE's, I, I i put i put it below superstars i don't even watch superstars but i know it's better yeah than Raw right now or whatever it is yeah i think it's it might be main event saturday night either maybe. way their booking is better and that's just random matches that don't mean anything Ricochet yeah. is on there all the time exactly it's a great <laughs> show yeah he lives on there so then we had smackdown like I said, this is this one's gonna be a quickie because there's there's not a whole lot to happen on SmackDown. We have we have a lot of t- I mean, obviously every SmackDown revolves around the Usos and Roman Reigns. Yeah. Because Jimmy's not taking shit from Roman Reigns, and Roman Reigns is not happy about that because he's yeah. the tribal chief and he needs to be acknowledged <laughs> again. Because to Jimmy's point, he did at Hell in a Cell when exactly. he had me, when he had me stranglehold, he yeah. did that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So last, so Roman decided to come out and attack everybody, uh, which apparently is going to set up Mysterio and Reigns at Hell in a Cell. Again, where does this come from? Like, we needed someone to feed to Roman. Yeah, that's and yeah, that's part, exactly what's going to happen because there is no fucking way that Ray is going to beat him. No. No way. Reigns has been killing everybody. I hope you're both wrong. 
I would love to see Ray beat Roman. I mean, I okay, so it. we're calling it here at Hell in a Cell. Amber's picking Ray Mysterio oh. for for the AWF <laughs> I title. Enough. I lose enough. Just like she picks her Penico at Double or Nothing. <laughs> So I Leo, poor Leo. That been gone. Leo. He's gone. We'll talk about him. Yeah, well, we got we'll, we got news on Leo Rush as well later. Uh, so then we got our match of Owens and Biggie versus Zayn and Cruz, which was an interest. It was an interesting tag match. I mean, these guys, all of them, great wrestlers. Uh, I hate the Aziz character, but I like what Cruz is doing as a heel. And yeah, he's doing he's, fine as a heel. Yeah, I think he could lose the accent, but that's you know. Uh, I mean, it's whatever. You got to yeah. do what you got to do for your care. I mean, Kofi was Jamaican for like five years. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's kind of cool that he's getting. No, he absolutely deserves a title. I mean, he's he's a he's another he's another really good. And wrestler. Owens got fucking rough with Cruz there at the end when he hit that pop up power bomb. He he cinched that in when he dude, when he smacked him in the campus. Owens is he's phenomenal, dude. He's so fucking good. He's funny as fuck. You know, he he's one of those guys that you hate him, but you 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 can't help but love him. You know, he's just he just has he just puts him. off that energy. No, I'm talking like when he was like a heel. I like heels. They don't matter. Well, but um, a lot of people, you know, didn't like him. Just like you know, just like Corbin. People hate Corbin. I love Baron Corbin. Uh, but Corbin will always have a solid match. He'll yeah, lose, he but he'll have a solid yeah. match. Yeah, and I can appreciate on, that. He, he puts on good matches, whether he loses or not. He, you know, he knows his shit. So yeah, then we set up for next week. It's going to be Owens and Big E versus Cruz and Aziz. Okay. Uh, I hate. I again. I I only dislike Aziz because Vince said Aziz is going to take Braun's place. That's why they got rid of Braun is Aww. because he thinks Aziz. Are you kidding me? Place. Yes. He's like we have, he goes, we have two giants and Aziz and Amos, and they don't make near near as much money as Braun does. Right, Braun well, did have a big contract, but he was worth it. The dude got oh yeah, absolutely really good. Like he kept yeah. getting better each year wrestling. So yeah, and like when he started, he was not in in good shape. He was just a big guy, and then yep. he got fucking jacked. Yep. So yeah, I would want to pay bump too if I was doing all that work. Yep. Yeah. Uh, then we got Carmella and Liv Morgan. For some reason, and Liv Morgan won. What? Beating Carmella. They want to make her happy. They got rid of her best friend. That's true. I could be <laughs> could be part of it. She should just be glad she has a job still. Yeah. See, like, there's there's so many people on the roster that. No, I don't want to see anybody lose their job. You know, obviously that fucking sucks. But yeah, it did does. There's. But- there's a tier list of people yeah. man, that you should go through and Alistair think, Black should not be fucking one of them. Well, I think Liv should have got cut over Ruby in all honesty. Mm-hmm. I think Ruby's got the better look and the better gimmick. Yep. Liv is only good with Ruby. She doesn't really have a good singles gimmick. Right. Exactly. They so. spent so much time repackaging her and they didn't even repackage her. No, it's, it's yeah. just, it was, it was stupid. It was a waste of time. They did more with Ruby because they brought her back with hair extensions. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. All, all that work. All that work. And bye-bye, Ruby. And then we got uh, Ding Dong Hello with oh, Seth Rollins. Yeah. Um, Bailey looks like a children's show villain. She that absolutely segment. does. <laughs> like absolutely i was like, like we, one of the old school talk show hosts yeah yeah which seth gives everything to this bit he does he is oh, yeah. all in on this bit oh yeah like he comes through the door even though it's just a door in the middle of the <laughs> ring like he goes all the way around comes through the door he he's having a bunch of fun he's chewing the scenery and then cesaro just trashes the fucking set so the yep. janitors don't have to yeah <laughs> and then bianca just comes out and laughs yeah so useless segment but i had fun with it no it was it was an entertaining segment man uh, yeah he, he ripped rollins pants and he was out there in his boxers yeah. <laughs> that was funny dude it was it was a funny uh funny kudos look. to rollins he he just whatever they give him man he makes it work dude rollins is one of the best man he really is him and his thousand suits yeah i mean he's got some badass looking suits dude. He's got so many different designs <laughs> uh, 
So then we set up the whole Ray and Roman thing. Then we got a weird singles match with Montez Ford and Chad Gable. It was weird seeing Montez out there by himself. Yeah. Uh, but solid match, but uh, Otis, who has shaved his face, which I did not like the look of that, uh, just comes out and wrecks everybody, uh, makes Otis look strong, sets up this whole, you know, Alpha Academy Street Profits thing. Yep. But eh, all in all, it was just a meh kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sounds and like then, a meh match. Oh my yeah, God. very meh. Holy oh, fuck, no. dude. Wow. We Why? Just we just saw his. <laughs> his same face. Oh, you didn't see it? No. It's it, it's weird. It's it, very weird. It's weird. I don't like it. I'm not a fan. Oh, just grow your beard back. Yeah. Grow it back. Just concentrate really hard. Get that beard back. <laughs> Mandy Rose reacted with a sad face or a weird face. <laughs> yeah, because it, it probably scared people. They probably didn't know who he was <laughs> walking around back there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then we got Rick Boogs. In Shinsuke Nakamura. I love what they're doing with him. It's cool, uh, man. So, so happy for him. I mean, surprised he still has a job, but he's making well, it work. That's the thing. Like, he, from what I remember, when he first got into NXT, I think he maybe had two or three matches, and that I think was, it was it. Two. Yeah, yeah, that two was matches. it. And then he was always out in the crowd and shit after mm. fucking COVID hit last year because, you know, obviously. Yeah, he was on like. Underground, too, I think. Was he? Yeah. I didn't watch yeah. it underground ever because I was like, no, yeah, fuck this show. Stupid. <laughs> uh, he didn't fight. So yeah, I was, I was. I'm always happy to see Rick Boogs. I love that he does the the entrance for Shinsuke. Uh, yeah. We've, we've seen the same Nakamura Corbin match every week. It's literally it's the same finish. Surprise roll up. Corbin goes to grab his crown. Boogs with the save. Boogs the with crown the save. Back. <laughs> uh, but now we've got the official setup that they will have a match for the crown to see who will be the oh. the, the real king. Oh, so it's gonna be Shinsuke, dude. It's, it's gonna be Shinsuke. It's gonna, be Shinsuke. Shinsuke. It's gonna play him off. It's gonna be great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then he can uh, so yeah, and then so yeah, we got more reigns, reigns, and Mysterio stuff there at the end. And so that that was SmackDown. Like I said, not a lot. Sounds pretty lame. And we're like a week from Hell in the Cell. Yep. Yeah. So then we got might be slightly better, but probably not. Didn't they confirm Ray and Roman for Hell in a Cell? It's not on the card yet, but it's pretty much. This. I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen. They wouldn't do all. I hope they wouldn't do all this work for nothing. Well, <laughs> well, buddy, <laughs> they, they are very notorious for doing that. I'm trying to hold on, Joe. I'm trying <laughs> okay. to hold on. Okay. So then we got NXT. Which was the go home show because we have takeover uh, tomorrow. Yes. Which I have to get my COVID shot tomorrow, so I'm gonna take a little nap for the pay per view. Uh, great, great uh, go home show. We had uh, Austin Theory versus Oni Lorcan in a great match. Oh, dude, that match was uh, that was a great match to start the night off with, and a and a great way to to have gr- the Gargano done thing kind of heat up without yep. them having to face each other because on yep. the main roster. They just have the same match again and again. You, you don't want to see the people face until the pay per view. Make the people exactly. fight until the pay per view. That's what yep. NXT does because they exactly. don't look, look shit wrong. Yep. Uh, backstage clip with Oni and his weird noises. Yeah. Oh yeah, the before earlier the earlier today thing. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. I had to replay it. <laughs> Well, Pete attacked him. And I know, but it was funny. The, the security came in and split him up, and Oni was just screaming at the top of his lungs, get off of me! Like, he, I think he over-exaggerated that a little bit, but, you know. Maybe he just finished his energy drink, and he was just, like, right there on the brink. Uh, he was just raging. <laughs> raging from the sugar injection. Dunn's like, man, you got to break it down a couple of notches. Like, <laughs> we just yeah. started the show. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, great match. The- Theory was tearing it up with some of those oh, combo dude. moves. Yes. And yeah, then he he's... took that huge bump on the apron. Like, he yep. smacked his back on the apron. Yep. Uh but yeah, Lorcan gets the distraction finish because Theory is concerned about what's going on with Gargano. Uh, yep. but yeah, overall, great way to build the feud without having to put your main stars in the mix. Yep. Great, great booking, uh, Triple yep. H. Yes. <laughs> King of Kings, dude. Then we get one of the better parts of NXT, which is Cameron Grimes and LA Knight vying for Ted DiBiase's love and affection. <laughs> it was 
beautiful. We, we Dude, had the I vignettes. Love, I love this whole fucking thing with Ted DiBiase, man. It's Cameron Grimes is funny as fuck. Mm -hmm. I've been a fan of him since he started. Cameron Grimes. Uh, <laughs> he's great dude and this this thing with him and la Knight is it's it's i'm looking forward to this match well, dude. it's perfect it's you got the badass. guy like la Knight who does you know, exude this confidence of like the winning guy and then yes. cameron grimes who's just trying his hardest <laughs> to be the winning guy it's, yeah. a, it's a great setup he will pay you to say he's the winning guy yeah. exactly yeah uh because L.A. Knight's got this, like, nice house and these this, these ladies, this nice car. Grimes just has, like, one spot of a pool. Yep. <laughs> it's funny, dude. He, like, lights the cigar with the $100 bill. He's choking on it and, like, trying to drink it. It's great. Great vignettes. But yeah. then we get the setup. We're having a ladder match for the million-dollar title at yes. TakeOver. That's yes. fucking brilliant. Yep. I love it. Yep. It's going to be a good match, dude. I'm looking forward to it. But are they going to keep the million dollar title and have it defended and everything? Because that would be great. I, I think like I think Grimes is going to win it, and I think he's going to have it for a while. Yep, I think Grimes is going to win it too. Not, I'm not saying that LA Knight doesn't deserve it because. But this has been Grimes' whole thing. It has, it has, and this has been going on for months now. Yeah. Um, you know, LA Knight is is a great fucking wrestler, and I know that they're going to use him in the way they need yeah. to. But he his best thing that he's got he is a great mouthpiece dude the dude mm -hmm. can fucking talk and it's I, I love hearing him talk dude i fucking love hearing him talk he cracked me up when he was in the jacuzzi with the girls and he's like dying laughing and he's like enough <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're like uh, okay we were just all laughing together <laughs> yeah that was great uh, yeah. can't wait to see that match yeah. uh, hope Grimes gets it I think he's going to do a great thing with the million dollar title good to see yeah. the million dollar title back yeah it's cool man it's so pretty. yeah since Ted DiBiase couldn't give it to his son because he gave up wrestling yeah they give it to Cameron Grimes yep uh I'm then cool Candice LeRae called out Poppy yep uh and got Io Shirai instead that was great yep yep uh fun segment she's like i don't wrestle but i know someone who does and i'm like will yep. you blink one time please <laughs> <laughs> poppy's a little she's a little creepy dude. i like creepy people. she's a little creepy but she she made that that long uncomfortable eye contact yeah uh honestly i was really surprised to see eo yeah i uh, thought she was gonna be gone longer i did too so i was thinking that maybe it was like somebody new for whatever no, I reason knew it was EO. as soon as poppy came out i was like poppy is not gonna do anything eo is coming yeah and hey look we had that whole thing with bad bunny you can't tell me we can't train poppy too okay you're i mean you're right dude poppy's no. gonna do a canadian destroyer at takeover it's gonna be amazing <laughs> yes dude that would be so cool no, not <laughs> yeah that's not that's then we not. got moon versus dakota kai because moon will be taking on raquel gonzalez so it makes sense to pit her against her, her, right, her yeah. right hand good match oh yeah uh, great match. Dakota Kai, great wrestler. She's just right now, she's going to take a backseat. I think eventually she's going to go against Raquel and there's going to be a world title match. There. I'm, I'm waiting for them to, to split up, dude, because it, it's going to happen. Because uh, in the beginning of the match, they do that that even shenanigans. They're like, like, miss a move, miss a move, miss a move, kick at the same time, elbow at the same time. And I was like, nice. Yep. Good job, yep. guys. Yeah. That's a lot of timing stuff. That they, and then Gonzalez just was like, ah, fuck this match. I'm just going to attack Ember out yep. of nowhere. Yep. Uh, so yeah, good go home show sets up the rivalries fine. Oh, and we they set up that uh winner takes all uh yep. MSK Bronson Reed against Legato Del Fantasma. Really excited for that too. Thought that was That's an interesting good. thing to do is to throw all the titles together. Yeah, it's really cool, man. I don't think anything like that's been done. I know they've had like the undisputed championships, you know, but, back but not day, but... tag belts and a single belt at the same right. time, like yeah. for different for. Like it's different if someone has all the belts, yeah. But like actually having a team and a singles person team up yeah, to I defend it, new. yeah. It's it was well, because Legato Del Fantasma is a, a three person stable. Like it just was it aligned perfectly. Yep. Uh, so yeah, that was that was the week in WWE. NXT was great. Everything else was just, you know usual, eh, like it always is. <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll quickly go over Dark and Elevation since I know you guys didn't really watch those. Um. Uh, most of it is just 
uh, setting up rather rivalries with enhancement talent. Like the varsity blondes, they, they kind of have a little vignette. Uh, negative ones back with the dark order because he was gone for a couple weeks, probably had to finish schoolwork. I actually did read something about that. Uh, they didn't put him on TV. I don't know if it was this past week or last week because he didn't get his school his schoolwork done. <laughs> <laughs> But your I mean, wrestling I mean, is getting in the way of your schoolwork right dude. like i mean he's a kid man you know he, he's he's obviously gonna follow in in, in brody's footsteps oh yeah this kid's um, invested in right AEW. right like you really i mean he has a contract he does so if he really wanted to he could fuck off in school because hey i've already got this you know? His mom is not going to let him. Oh, I know that. I know yeah. that's not going to happen. Hey, do, uh, do your work, Brody Lee Jr. <laughs> like, I, I'm sure one of the Dark Order guys is, like, in charge of schoolwork in the back. Like, it's probably 10. It's, yeah, 10 or silver. T- he, uh, 10 and Ty Conti is who he spends most of the time with. Yeah. So... Uh, and Evil Uno, uh, he, he had his match against Miro. So a lot of Dark and Elevation is him trying to get some momentum because he doesn't have a lot of singles matches under his belt. He's mostly a tag guy. So right. I had to kind of give him some some time there. Yep. Uh, so he had a match against Danny Limelight. And he <laughs> Limelight was – they've spent all this time trying to get this guy over. The crowd had none of him. They were all about Evil Uno. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which Dark Order is over as fuck. Like, oh, yeah, dude. So it's not a great idea if you're trying to get someone over to put them against the dark order. Nope. Because they're not going to get, they're not going to get the reaction. Exactly. Yeah. Like at one point, like limelight goes for a dive and Uno just walks away. Like he just throws <laughs> his hands up and walks away and he just eats shit on the ground. I'm like, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. That's funny, dude. Uh, th- there's a lot of dark order on dark too. Cause uh, Alan angels and Alex Reynolds had a magic and see acclaimed. Uh, which ended in the boom box crack across the head. So the dark order loses. And it's funny because Max Caster called angels and Reynolds, the two least popular members of the dark order when he was coming out to the ring. And I was like, yeah, you're probably right with that. Yeah. Thumbs yeah. Up. That seems about right. I mean, cause you know, the dark order's got so many fucking people in it. it, it it's going to continue to grow. Cause there's rumors yeah. about two people who are going to potentially join the dark order. Uh, more on that later. So Chris Statlander, <laughs> Statlander quickly becoming one of my favorite female wrestlers. She's really cool, dude. Her little space gimmick thing mm-hmm. and, and the fact that they teamed her up with best friends is, yeah. is fucking cool, dude. Well, she had a match with Queen Aminata, who is a, a newcomer to Dark. She's only had like two matches. Uh, but they had a great little back and forth because, you know, Statlander does the boop where she boops you on the nose. Yep. And she tried to do it. The, the queen chick like stepped away. I was like, nah, fuck off. But then the, the the queen chick has the rikishi thing where she tries to rub her ass on you. Oh, she did. She did that to Statlander. Statlander got mad. They were in a tie up. She booped her on the nose, then hit her with her ass. And I was like, that's brilliant. Like yeah. we, we need this rivalry between the yeah. rikishi ass rub and the boop. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this, this great uh, selling stuff. Uh, even the ref was like, when she hit the boop, the ref like was like, oh my God. Like he sold it. Like it was this big thing. Because uh, they have they have fun on dark because they they actually have fans back at dark and elevation now. Right. So we're seeing what's over, and this was over as fuck on that show. Good. Uh, then the wingmen had a match against the Varsity Blondes. So JD Drake and Ryan Nemeth, you know uh, Dolph Ziggler's brother. Oh. They had a match against the Varsity Blondes. Interesting. Yeah, the wingmen they basically just took two tag teams they had nothing for and just threw them into a stable where their whole gimmick is they think they're attractive. <laughs> okay like Dolph Ziggler's brother carries around a statue and he acts like he's accepting an award oh my god I gotta see that yeah we'll have to check that shit and out. uh the one guy comes out on the man sled yeah it's it, 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 it's interesting you, 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 it no needs to be sled. seen or the sensual sled something like that yeah uh but the varsity blondes obviously just whipped ass in this match because they, they're I, I believe they're getting ready to come back for another title shot soon they might be. They're fun to watch. Yeah. Well, and they added that that Julia Hart chick, the it's cheerleader good. chick, because she was yeah. on Dark for a little bit, and I was like, this gimmick's not going to get over. And then they threw her at the blo- the varsity blondes. I was like, oh, of course. I, it's total it's sense. fitting. You know, it's fitting. Uh, AW, you never fail me. 
then we had a Karushita versus Diamante, and Diamante built this like she was gonna like get some momentum, and then she just got completely beaten by Shida. Oh. And I was like, well, what was the what was the point of this? This was the one thing. I was like, what was this match? Uh, then on dark, Archer murdered the fuck out of one of his opponents because he's trying to get momentum back from losing to Miram. Right. Uh, Hardy put the bounty on Christian Cage, which would translate to dynamite. Mm-hmm. Abaddon, compl- I, I think she legitimately scared this poor jobber. It was, <laughs> it was her AW debut on dark, and she had to go against Abaddon. And uh, I, she, she looked actually a little bit tense. She probably was. It, Abaddon. It, d- dude we and love Ab- her, man. abaddon stays in character even backstage and stuff like when everyone's yeah. vlogging she'll keep her character like she did she was on uh the, the bunny she has a vlog where she taste tests oreos and abaddon was on it but she stayed in character while taste testing oreos oh, I see that. <laughs> it, it was brilliant dude that's awesome man she's i hope I follow her she's great i hope she i hope they actually she, do she's gonna be a future main her. eventer like yep. she's the gimmick is there Oh, dude, it's so badass. So badass. So glad she didn't go to WWE. Yeah. Oh, she would have been like nothing in WWE. No. Like, they would have just squashed her. Yeah. They would have gave everything to Alexa. They were like, no. Just and I wrote here a chaos project, which is Serpentico and Luther. They got a rare win. Good, good for you, Amber. Your people are doing something. Yay, Serpentico. <laughs> <laughs> My people. I can't keep me rush. And then Marco Stunt wrestled a guy his size. They had another jobber. Like they were exa- like Marco even did like this and they were like the same height. And he's like, Oh my God. Really? And then like the guy hit the ropes and tried to shoulder block Marco and he took it and he's like, do it again. And the guy went and hit the ropes and did it. And he took it again. Dude, like, ah! I'm going to have to watch that. That's going to be, that's going to be fun. Cool. Yeah, like man. Marco was doing like power slams and stuff since they're the same height. He can actually do like wrestling moves on the guy. Yeah. It was really cool. Yeah. That is cool, dude. I'm definitely going to check that out. Cause I want to see. <laughs> I wanna... Smackdown highlight. Uh, uh. Good, good for marco yeah that's cool man that's really cool uh and then i guess they're breaking up sunny kiss and joey janela because sunny kiss had a match with one of the factory guys and lost and janela didn't come to the ring and like when he was getting attacked after the match so yeah you know. i mean that that whole situation's whatever. there's a future for sunny kiss in aw uh, i think so yeah very talented think- in the ring what Oh, yeah, I forgot to do this at the start. Joey wants somebody to team up with Sunny Kiss. <laughs> that would be brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I dude. I, I, I think that's he'll end up in AW at some point. Like, I hope so, man. I don't know. Dream was. I, I, I think they have to wait for this legal battle. Like, you know, this controversy has got to blow over. You can't bring someone in and in the middle of it. I understand that. But, like, he's. If he gets cleared of all this shit, he's too good of a wrestler for someone not to pick up. Absolutely. Uh, Nyla Rose also killed a poor jobber. Like, this poor girl. Like, it was also her AEW debut. And, I mean, she just got murdered for, like, two minutes. Like, it, it was I believe horrible. it. I believe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bear Bronson had a match with QT Marshall because the other half of Bear Country is injured right now. The Bear Boulder guy. Oh, yeah. He, he injured his shoulder. So, Bear Bronson has basically been enhancement talent for a while. Like he has good matches, but he'll lose. Like I don't think they they need to give him some momentum soon because when Bear Boulder comes back, you, you can't have a guy who's lost like twelve matches in a row on the team. Right. Uh, then the main event, four and a half star match here on Dark between Matt Seidel and Dante Martin. They fucking killed it on Dark. I mean, there were so many different. There was a Mid-air spin kick by Seidel. Uh, there was a, bu- a bunch of uh, lightning spiral. Uh, gets the win for Seidel. Uh, there was a, a standing front flip stunner by Dante Martin. Wow. Yeah, like, I don't know if you've seen Dante Martin. He's been on dark a lot. He was in that team top flight with his brother, Darius, and Darius got injured, and Dante's been singles for a while. I mean, this kid is killing it. Like, he is – he, cause he's, he's only, he's 20. Oh shit. He's yeah. young buck then. Dude. Yeah. So like th- <laughs> this kid's got a future if he's doing this kind of stuff at 20. Yeah. So that was the dark and elevation note. So then we can talk about dynamite and then the news. 
So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I've seen him. Okay, Dante he Martin. Needs visual references. Yeah, it's I okay. Know. Some yeah. like I know most names, but like some names don't ring a bell. Yeah, his, his match with Seidel, like it, it was impressive. And it's a good thing they gave Seidel something to do since he got like. Well, technically, we don't know if he was ever eliminated from that battle royal. He could still be in it right now. Motherfucker, he was eliminated, okay? <laughs> Wait, show me the proof. Back. Show he me the tape. Show he me the tape. I refuse to let this go. Uh, so, Dynamite, we had uh, Angelico versus, or Angelico, I don't know how you pronounce it, versus Christian Angelico. Cage. A decent match, but we all knew you're not going to beat Christian Cage. No, no. Uh, but this is probably setting up Hardy versus Christian Cage, which I'm all for. Yes. Because uh, the whole time, Matt is just shit-talking Christian during this match. Christian gets all of his stuff in. And then Jungle Boy to the rescue after the match because Jungle Boy's got that white, hot, baby face stuff going yes. on. Yes, yes. Uh, because actually tonight is his match with Omega. So, yeah, they moved it to Saturday. It's like there's only one what? match. There's only one match tonight. It'll be Jungle Boy and Omega. For the title? For the title, yes. Because he oh, won the Casino Battle Royal. Oh, well, we can watch that. Oh, fuck. Yeah, well, we're definitely so, watching that. Yeah, that it's going to be a good match. Jungle Boy, that like, he is dude, so impressive. Dude. I want him to win so bad, but. It's not going to happen. I don't think he's the one to. to I don't, I don't think so. But it would be fantastic because there would be an eventual match with Christian, which would be also really good. Yeah. But Jungle Boy, there's titles in this kid's future. He's only, I think he's 23. Yeah. He's you know, young, he, dude. Plenty of time to get this stuff in. Christian, he's only got one title reign in him. Yeah. So it's, I think it's coming soon. Christian may be the guy to knock off Omega. He could be. I'd be all right with that. Well, everybody thought Edge was going to get another title on him. He didn't. See, that's WWE, though. This is yes. AEW. There's Point a difference. Case. That is WWE. Yeah. And they're shitty booking. Then we got shitty. a six-man match. We had the Bucks and Brandon Cutler taking on Pac, Pentagon, and Eddie Kingston. What, Eddie a fucking, Kingston. what a fucking match this was. Four and a half stars on this match, too. Uh, I mean, you're, the Bucks, Pentagon, Pac, Kingston, they're not – they solid match every time. You can't have a bad match with these guys. No. Uh, Pentagon can wrestle a garbage bag, and I would think it Oh, yeah, I would absolutely watch it, dude. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but Pac was the star of this match because uh, they, they're still coming off that world title match, that five-star world title match back at Double or Nothing. Yes. Uh, like, he, I mean, this, like, they, uh, a Pentagon, though, did a, he was m- getting monkey flipped by Matt, grabs Nick mid-monkey flip, hits a Canadian destroyer as he's rolling through the monkey yeah. flip. I was yeah. like, God damn it, dude. Like They're the things so they good, do, yeah. it makes no physical sense, but he's no, able but to do it. They pull it off. Uh, then after the match, there's a big brawl, and Kazarian comes to the aid of uh, Pac and Kingston and all them. So Kazarian's he's going to be in this mix somewhere against yeah. uh, the Omega stable. Maybe Kazarian's going to team with somebody and go against uh, go against the Bucks. I don't know who. Can't, can't be Daniels. Can't be Daniels. Nope, SCU's done for. Maybe one of the new signees will be one of his one of his partners. Possible. Uh, then we had Cody, Arn, and Arn's son. For Arn's some reason. son. He looks so much like him. It, it looks exactly like him. It's yeah. fucking Cody's crazy. Like, I'm like, you can't tell. Just look. Well, I didn't. I didn't see his face. I just saw that he was wearing that hideous orange shirt. That right there. And then- but uh, then it his face. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. And QT tells Cody, I want a strap match. And Cody's like, I'll do a strap match right now. And I was like, well, Cody, that's not how it works. You know, you're a booker. You know how this works. Right. <laughs> and then Q- QT cheap shots Arn, and B- Brock Anderson has none of that shit. <laughs> Takes nope. him right down. <laughs> that's my dad. <laughs> is Brock Anderson going to wrestle? Is this, is this what's going to happen? He might, he might be, dude. I don't know. Yes. But I don't know. Cody Rhodes is kind of like the least enjoyable bit of AEW right now. I will say, like, he's a great wrestler. It's just like we get it. Like, you're you're Captain America right now. <laughs> yeah, not, you got the flag tattooed on your fucking neck. I get it. Dude. Have they had the baby yet? Nah, not yet. He's gonna go away when he has a baby. So. He's gonna bring that newborn to the ring, <laughs> <laughs> and it's gonna clock QT Marshall in the face. 
you should just take a break. No, I, I think I think that's why maybe they're not putting him in anything like super majors because they know that you know he's he's gonna be leaving soon. So why, no, why he's gonna give birth to... in the ring live on pay-per-view, witness the birth of Cody Rhodes' child. <laughs> While the while the American national anthem plays in the background, yeah. we're gonna wrap that baby that in a flag. Baby be born with a neck tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna have the the nightmare family fucking oh my tattoo God. on its neck. And that baby's yeah. gonna gonna learn how to apply some holds as soon as it hits that ring canvas. Oh, it's crossroading anybody that's in the way after it comes out, dude. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Cody Rhodes, he's got this weird like he's like. Lex Luger back in 94. Like he's all about America right now. <laughs> he even Man. have you seen his bus? No. So on the vlogs, you see Cody Rhodes' bus a lot. He bought a fucking tour bus, which he goes around on, and it's just America and nightmare family everywhere, just all oh, over it. Uh so he, he's really invested in the American gimmick. Uh then we got Miro and Evil Uno. Decent match, but we all knew Evil Uno was not going to knock off Miro. Miro's undefeated. Yeah. Since being in AEW, and it's not going to be Evil Uno the night. If anyone in the Dark Order is beating Miro, it's 10. 10. ten or Hank like or four. Adam Page. Those are the only two men yeah. I could see beating Miro. Yep. So sorry, Evil Uno. It was not your night. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Poor guy. Uh then Archer had another squash match. He entered the ring with the guy he was supposed to face <laughs> and beat him in the ring. Yep. Like he came out beating the guy up and jake roberts is like yeah look at him go why would you want to make that guy mad look at him go yeah and then he so he has a squash match on actual dynamite which is rare it is rare uh then the wingmen are going to set up a rivalry with the best friends because they're going to call out orange cassidy for being the worst dressed man in AEW. (laughs) now will cassidy care probably not but (laughs) they're trying they're trying to get some tv time (laughs) <laughs> with orange cassidy yeah uh because the the, the wingmen they, they they wear their nightclub t-shirts to the ring uh yeah that's a thing yeah yeah then nyla rose had a match with layla hirsch it was okay three stars there's a lot of a lot of ground and pound submission stuff happening here uh then Britt baker called nyla rose bitch said she ain't gonna take her title and i said uh yeah probably not no one's taking Britt's title nope Nope, she deserves it, man. She's gonna have it for a while. I'm, yeah, I'm, she is. I'm saying it, it at least half a year. She's yep. gonna hold that belt. I think she's gonna hold it longer than Sheeta did. How how long was Sheeta's reign? Oh, she had it for a while, dude. Um, she had it pretty much all through the pandemic, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. probably a year. Over a year, I would say. She yeah, had a like, long run with it, and there was there was a couple matches that, uh, um. I can't remember who the hell she fought, but there was a couple people that they put her against Didn't that Abaddon I thought Abaddon got one, but yeah, <laughs> I knew Abaddon wasn't going to win. It's too early for her to get a title. She, she pulled a uh, Shayna Baszler and bit her in the neck. She did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which go Abaddon. She's a living dead girl. Of course you, you got to bite people. Yeah, It makes more sense for her to bite someone than Shayna. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then we got our main event, which was Powerhouse Hobbs and Brian Cage taking on 10 and Hangman Adam Page. What what a tag team match. There's a, there a lot of dude in this match. <laughs> Brian Cage is a lot of dude. Yeah, he is. He's <laughs> and, scary. I mean, all, really, three out of four of these guys are brick shit houses. Like, yeah, yeah. And then there's Hangman. The, the Hangman. There. The Hangman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the I mean, the, uh, Hangman and 10 are over the crowd was losing their minds for these guys uh which good for 10 though he's probably the second most popular person even over evil uno i think he's really yep. popular in dark order yep uh, and uh cage and hangman tie up in the beginning because of course they've had this rivalry we saw it a double or nothing we knew they were going to start it off uh powerhouse hobbs actually got a lot of a lot of stuff in here actually looked really strong they even over cage which wow. was rare uh but 10 10 those pump kicks by 10 it, it damn near kicks your head off your shoulders i mean this oh, dude, guy yeah he, they're they're strong as fuck he put he puts the grease in it yes because when, when he hit cage in the face i was like he might be unconscious when he yeah 
Um, yeah. And poor Hangman just got tossed around for a while. I mean, he he, he was a rag doll. He he was a lily there for a minute, just getting stomped <laughs> around the ring. Uh, was he drunk? He probably was. That's okay, then. He had a couple. Yeah, he had yeah. a couple. He, 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 he had to he had sure. to get that buzz knocked off. But then once he sobered up, he was good to go. <laughs> uh, then Stark shows up, throws the FTW title to Cage. Cage throws it back, says, "I do not need this title." And then chases Ricky Starks away, leaves Hobbs in the middle of the ring, who gets fucking laid out by 10, and then Buckshot Lariat, one, two, three, 10, and Hangman win, and Cage is done with Team Taz officially. Yeah, yeah. I I think that's something that's been in the world. Yeah, it's been coming ever since the whole Sting thing. Yep. So, you know, it's, it's about time. Yep. And, you know, interesting to see where Cage goes. Yep. after this you know he's yeah a, i mean he's not gonna he's a need good wrestler body. he's yeah. gonna get utilized hell yep. they may they may put him in a program with miro after this you know they could he can hold an actual title that means something right yeah not just taz's title yeah he wouldn't have handed away a real title no. exactly no <laughs> who's gonna be ftw champion now that cage is gone though is it is it gonna be starks <laughs> is it gonna be hook it's gonna be taz it ain't gonna be taz it's is he going to find some other person? Maybe a new Team Taz member? Maybe. Who knows? So then we got some news. Uh, Alistair Black oh, potentially heading to All Elite Wrestling. Uh, WWE also made him an offer, though. WWE yeah. tried to get Alistair back, but he's probably not going to take it because why would you? He, 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 did, he did all this stuff. He sat at home for seven months right. to build this character. Right. Actually, did research on his family lineage for yes. this character. Yes, just to have one TV spot, and then like, ah, sorry, we're just gonna get rid of you. He's not going back to WWE, even if money talks. The guy wants to wrestle. I hope not. Yes, he I does. Don't want to see him back in WWE. So I, I expect Tommy End to show up at AEW and probably join the Dark Order. That's exactly what I was thinking, dude. Because why not? He's his, he's got his the gimmick. gimmick exactly his gimmick is fitting like that order, he doesn't need the dark order but they could make him you know he could legitimize the dark order instead of comedy people they could be like yeah, serious yes like he, he comedic when brody was alive well <sighs> he made it serious for a while but then they started doing some comedy stuff toward like right before he died yeah like that that dinner party thing that they had mm. a while back like when that brody comedic, first right yeah, that was like that was great, dude. I loved, I loved. I mean, I, I love Dark that. Order stuff. They're hilarious. They're, they're they're great, dude, and they they know they know how to put on shit like that. Every single one of them, and Brody just made it that more fucking incredible. Because look at how if Braun goes to AEW, wouldn't it make more sense? Because he's kind of- well. That's the next rumor. Braun trimmed his beard on the pictures floating around. He did. Uh, he and it's like it matches up with his face now, eh. but it looks a hell of a lot better than Otis with yeah <laughs> with not with well, nothing because he didn't shave it. It just trimmed it. Like it looks fine. Yeah, no, it, I it's think still it looks, Braun Strowman. Yeah, Braun. I, I think it looks great actually. I miss Braun. It's so sad. Yeah, so Braun potentially to also going to AEW. Uh, I could see him knocking off Miro. Yes. Yep. Like that, because he's you know he's gonna come in and just wreck whatever the fuck puts in front of him. I mean, see that's that's he's gonna get treated that, like a monster, right? But see that's something that uh, I want to say I read a couple days ago. Um, somebody was saying it may have been Cornette or Bischoff or you know one of those outside of mm. wrestling guys um, that were saying that if Braun went to AEW, he would be going there for no reason because they wouldn't have there's nobody the size of braun in aw it don't matter there's guys it that doesn't can... know that's what i was thinking i was like who gives a fuck like if you put braun Strowman yeah. against kenny omega that's a huge match yeah it's if a you, huge match if you put braun against miro like miro has to use something besides power which is going to make it a really good match like just yeah. because a guy's big doesn't mean you have to find a bigger guy to be exactly. Him. It just means you have to have an interesting match because the, the other guy can't wrestle with strength. Exactly. Lance? Lance is close to him. Yeah, Lance, a match between but, him. But Lance is incredibly athletic. 
So yeah. in that match, Braun would be power and Lance would be hitting all sorts of crazy aerial moves to try yep. to offset it. Yep. And that'd be really good. It would be. You're, you're taking two different styles of wrestling and putting them in one fucking. Yeah. yeah. But that, that's what guys like Cornette, they're, they're, they're products of their time. You know, back in the, in the eighties, you had to find a bigger guy to take out a big guy. You don't yep. have to do that now. People nope. can actually hit the ropes and do moves. It's not just leg drops and, and, and fists. Body slams. And, yeah. Yeah. All the shit that Vince fucking gawks over. Exactly. Which, <laughs> speaking of, Triple H is apparently mad at fans always comparing WWE to AEW. Well, maybe you should make your product better. Well, see, in Triple H's defense, that is NXT. Yeah, NXT's NXT fantastic. I don't is, compare it to AEW. Yeah, no, they're but they're. I would put them in the same caliber of. Um, uh, I mean, they're booked very similar. They they're both good wrestling programs. Yeah, and they they actually use the people mm -hmm. that they have. Because people like Ricochet and Aleister Black and all them, they were very big deals in NXT. Exactly. They were huge. Which, speaking of NXT, Samoa Joe apparently bound for NXT. Yeah. He was spotted at the Performance Center. As a wrestler, not a commentator. Oh, that, that's so good. Yeah. So Joe might be the one that knocks off Karrion Cross. I would fucking love that, dude. And because I, Karrion's not losing the title tomorrow. No. As, as much as I would love to see someone else walk away with it. Yes. He could, he could lose it without. Okay, so you heard it here. Amber's betting on anybody but I Karrion Cross. Every, every time. <laughs> it's okay. I'm used to it. I have my own title up there. <laughs> yeah, I bought my own. I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> women's title. As long as not Bean wins tomorrow, that would be. He's gonna win, just because he said that. I mean, You're titles a don't. Winner. I have a better chance of winning. Joe Amber told you not to pick Pac in that main event. So did fucking Bean, dude. I know. I know. <laughs> you were right. That's the closest you've ever been to the yep. gold. It was right there. You could have just reached out and grabbed it. I don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's a thing of the past and also some news that i don't like uh john cena coming soon to wwe brock lesnar coming soon to wwe i'm excited for brock brock's gonna fight lashley so i'm not super thrilled I'm, on that i'm okay and cena's gonna fight reigns and Why? then be, because vince because vince it, he's big match <laughs> john vince. you gotta throw him in the big matches yeah which so okay so he jobbed to the Fiend. Well, gonna... okay, so the whole thing with him and the Fiend at Mania last was year stupid. wasn't even really a match. You know, because it was the whole... You it know, was the Firefly Funhouse. Right. Thing. So it, it wasn't it, like a pinfall. Finish, right, there was no really. pinfall, no submission, nothing like I that. So. Him at the end. Whatever. Yeah, but it wasn't like a true match. Like it's right. hard to I, call I don't it. consider that an actual. It wasn't like a sister Abigail. Come on, they put a lot of work into that. They did put a lot. It, it was, was it was a lot of fun. But yeah. but if if you were like you know did John like oh was that a big blow to John Cena's career? No, uh, maybe losing to Undertaker in like six seconds was. But again, that's the Undertaker. You can kind of walk away a from fucking that. Undertaker, dude. But He's you better believe you better believe Big Match John's coming coming for Roman Reigns. Big match John. Yep, and it'll be it'll be SummerSlam, I'm sure. Yeah, and so Lesnar's probably going to be at SummerSlam too, yeah. and potential Edge return at SummerSlam as well. That would be awesome. But I don't know for what. Yeah, what well, you 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 have him win the fucking Royal? He's Rumble. there hosting with Hulk Hogan. Yeah, yeah, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> and Titus O'Neil. Yeah, dude. <laughs> because he's still employed. He is. Yeah. He does a lot. That's why that man so deserves. <laughs> he does a lot man. of like. Charity stuff. behind this yeah he does a lot of like other event work for wwe titus better never ever I be terminated from that company ever world slide forever <laughs> that's the I thing mean, that's not going away though no <laughs> that that's the greatest rumble fail dude, in the history of the rumble. dude yeah and that's nothing nothing will top that nothing Just will top that ever. sliding under the ring <laughs> And, and Corey Graves' reaction to that yeah. just fucking made it even more just 
fucking great. Oh, like I forgot to mention it when I was talking about Rick Boogs, but Pat McAfee's reaction to Rick Boogs that is the best. Dude. Him dancing on the table like, come on, Michael Gold, get into it. Dude, McAfee, uh. I, I want to see him back in the ring again so bad because – but he's such a good matches, commentator. Yeah. He is. He is. And that's that's one of his big things, dude. The dude can fucking talk. He's funny as fuck. You know, he knows his shit. But the two matches that we got to oh, see. Oh, he was him, brilliant. He fucking killed it, dude. Those fucking moonsaults that he did were flawless. And that's Swanton one, Bomb off the off the, off cage. the fucking cage, dude. Come I on. I thought he was going to get hurt really bad. McAfee is – McAfee – needs to be in the wrestling scene I know. just I think it's well comedy. not just i'm not just talking about in the ring i think he'll be commentary for commentary whatever he like, like wrestling is his thing now yeah he's done with football he still follows football and shit but he's doing great he's doing great dude. i don't think he i love mcfree i think he's safe on commentary he doesn't want to get hurt. Then the next bit of news, Leo Rush retires after double or nothing because he injured he injured his shoulder pretty bad. And I, I think he'd been done. He just wanted to have like one more thing because on the challenge, he had a lot of uh, traumatic issue. Like he had a lot of like PTSD from like growing up in a group home and stuff. And he was like having a rough time on there. So he quit the challenge oh, because I he forgot was, he was on there. Yeah. Like, cause he said living in a house with a bunch of people was like bringing back him being raised in group homes. And he was having a lot of like, me- like issues with his mental health. And so he was ready to get back in the ring and he did and he got hurt and he's kind of like, all right, like I had my last go, I had some fans there, like, and you know, we're going to end it. I, I don't think it's a forever goodbye, but it's for a while. I was so excited to see him. He, he's such an impressive wrestler. He is. Oh dude. He's. <sighs> but see, that's the thing, dude. Yeah. You have Leo rush too. What did they do with him in WWE? They put him with Bobby Lashley. He was a great mouthpiece. What was a good mouthpiece? But he got him on nerves. Well, I mean, he was supposed he, to. He was supposed he to legit. make you hate him. He muted him. He him <laughs> I, I seriously would, dude. I'm no joke because he annoyed me that much. But I hadn't really looked at any of his previous work, you know, whether it be 205, whatever. But then he, they broke him and Lashley apart, and then he started doing his own thing. Leo Rush, dude, he is – I put he's in the same category with fucking Ricochet. Yeah, the guy's super impressive. He's super, super talented, dude. Like I said, he, he may just need a little bit of time just to get, you know, his, his, his well, one, his injury healed, but two, his, his mental health back in order. And I, I think he'll be back. It's just, uh, you know, I think a lot of shit happened in his life in a row. And yeah. sometimes you just, you just need a break. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I hope t- he comes back, dude, because I think we were all fucking looking yeah because the options like with aw and japan and everything yes. like, this guy's gonna kill it and yep. I, I, I think the door's still open i hope it is uh I'll and then he hasn't closed it the so last okay. rumor which is the most like thin rumor but there's potential that bray may ask for release because he's had a lot of stuff with you know Br- he's always wanted to be around like brody's family because, exactly like, and negative one is in AEW. He's signed yep. to AEW. I think Bray will eventually make his way to AEW. It may not be soon. It could be a couple years still. But it seems like he's distancing himself from WWE more and more. Well, I have been. I have read a couple things because uh, you we know nobody's seen him since Mania, <laughs> and no one is the authority on on Bray like, like you. Funhouse after. After Mania, he did that oh, one yeah. Firefly Funhouse, and then, that was then, it. Then, he, then he asked for time off. Alexa absorbed his whole character. So yeah, which is and, and she's doing a good job, but like, you know, we're all waiting for the fiend. Like that's that's the whole draw. Right. I'm annoyed by it. I am a huge Alexa Bliss fan, but I'm annoyed that like she just took everything and he's gone. But I I get it, it's his choice. He wants to be off. But I if think- he does go to AEW. The, the potential is unlimited. Oh, dude, they could do so much with him there. Um, not only, you know, they, he could do the whole Fiend thing without having to have, you know, like being a part of the Dark Order or anything mm-hmm. like that. But I think he'll be a part of the Dark Order if he goes. Yeah, having, is- like, I feel having, if, if Alistair ends up going to AEW as well, I feel that putting Bray 
if they both went to Dark Order, mm-hmm. having Bray be the leader would make more sense than Alistair. They, they could feud over who the leader is, too. So you have a good, like, Bray-Alistair match. It wouldn't be, dude. But Bray <laughs> wouldn't be going for a while. If he yeah. Well, I'm saying, like, Al- Alistair's probably going soon. So he'll yeah. take over the Dark Order. And then when Bray comes in, it could be like, this is my stable. I will take over. And then they'll have a feud. And then dude. Bray will take over. Dude. What would be the point of watching <sighs> WWE anymore? I, I'm telling you, dude. If, <laughs> For if, Rick Boots. If Bray, if Bray, oh, yeah, okay. if, <laughs> if, if, if Bray goes to AEW, I don't give a fuck about Raw. I don't give a fuck about SmackDown. I'll still watch NXT, but other than that, I will be done, dude. WWE's main shit has pissed me off for so fucking long. There's not a whole lot that I have left in, in Raw, especially. SmackDown, yeah. there's a few things I, yeah. I enjoy. I just hate watching the same thing over and over. Raw, especially. It's literally Raw is so game. repetitive, you know. And it's so long. And so many it's th- three hours of the same thing. Yeah. Oh, let's show you what happened at the beginning of the night. That's going to be a 10 minute second. Like, you don't need all that. Cut the yeah. bullshit Why out. Why are you recapping something I watched an hour ago? I was there. Continue right. with the program. Right. Like, they, they, I just, I don't know, man. I can't do it. It's a mess. So, that, that's all the week's worth of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which, you know, every week we'll be recapping the week in wrestling. Um, and like I said, I really just watch Dark and Elevation just to see if there's any good matches or any potential story notes. But there's usually not going to be a lot from there. And the news is actually, there was not a lot of news this week. There's usually a shit ton of news. There's usually a lot right, of but news it, but. For me, like, like the last couple of weeks have been have been big, man. You know, Alistair and Braun getting released. Buddy Murphy. Yeah, I think everybody's just Ruby. waiting to see who turns up where. That's yep. what's, what's going on right now. Yeah, I mean Andrade is like, an AEW now. That's nice. Yeah, which I'm, I'm, dude, I'm super stoked to see what he's gonna do. Uh, a match between him and fucking Omega, man. Triple A <sighs> World Title, dude. That's he's gonna, gonna win the Triple A World Title. Like, I think he will too. Omega uh, has got to stop collecting belts at some point. <laughs> yeah, like, dude, we all know, man. We all know you're fucking great. He's got the bragging rights. He's he's gonna know. show up on Raw and take the U.S. title from Sheamus <laughs> soon. Like, I'd be cool with that. Whatever. He's just cl- all the belts. I'd let it happen, dude. Yeah. But I'm, no, I'm surprised he didn't show up at Ring of Honor yet and try to take the Ring of Honor world title. Right. Well, he's he's gonna end up losing one of them. And it, he's probably gonna lose the triple A title first because I Because I, it's 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 the kind of the least notable of the ones he has. Right exactly. Now. And I think because Moose is the next challenger for the TNA title, I think he's gonna lose to Moose. He might. So I think he'll just have the AEW world title here soon because yeah. It's uh, and, and it's more because Omega is wrestling in three different companies every week right now. That's a lot of wrestling. Like the, yeah, he's a busy man. Yeah, like you know, at some point the guy's got to sleep. So yep. you know, got to yep. lose some of the titles. Yeah. So anything else we need to touch on before we wrap us up? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I'm just uh patiently waiting dude that's yep. why i want to go to all out so bad is because oh, all out is going to be fantastic Alistair's i can't wait no compete clause will be up by then that could be the debut and if he fucking shows up dude i will lose my shit we double check the date <laughs> so he <could> <laughs> his contract his his no his up. compete clause will be up is that is that what made you want to go August. is that what that is it? the main reason yes that is the main reason because i am 99.99 percent sure that he is well there's show. always a return at an AEW pay-per-view there's exactly. always some sort of big thing because they yeah. only do four i know it's a big pay-per-view but look at double or nothing with fucking oh no, that's what i'm saying it's with leo game. rush Stop and huge <laughs> huge crazy. huge crowd pop dude you yeah. heard everybody lose their shit look, look at amber's pick of serpentico no one saw that coming Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody saw it coming. No, I saw it coming. It was great. It was yeah. great. Hey, yeah. hey, you, it still did better than Matt Seidel. <laughs> he was eliminated, bro. Just saying. Show me the footage. <laughs> he was fucking it. eliminated. Find it. find it, Amber. Find the footage. <laughs> Do it. Find the footage. Yep. I'll find it. Yeah. Well, Prove that I should be world champion right now. <laughs> no, I didn't have near. I didn't have near any points. Yeah, you, you didn't do too hot, man. Well, well because because mid midway through, I was like, "Well, I'm not going to win, so I'm just going to pick who I want." 
I mean, there, come, yeah, there comes a point in the pay-per-view where you know if you're going to win the title or not. Kev knows about the first two matches that he's <laughs> never going to win that title. Kev. Everyone knew that you should have listened to me because you could have maybe won. Tomorrow. Did she, the glares. Oh, man. It was uh, her face when you were okay, like, man, so, I should have okay, went. What? You're like, man, I should have went with Omega. And she was just like. <laughs> and, you know, dude, like. That's what he sees when he fucks up. From the time, from the time everybody made their entrance i don't know if you guys noticed or not i was silent until the fucking bell rang because i was contemplating in my mind if i should have stuck with fucking Pac or if i should have fucking switched to omega and i just i didn't say anything and then the bell I rang cassidy like, oh. had a better chance of winning than Pac did in all honesty <sighs> see i don't know though, dude because so i mean omega was going to retain but if someone else was going to win it was going to be cassidy the the, the crowd I mean, not even just, just us. Like every time Cassidy was near there, like it, everybody, it, it we all lost wild. our shit, dude. Yeah, yeah. We were like, "Is he really gonna fucking do this?" But the main reason why I went with Pac is because the match that him and Orange Cassidy had on Dynamite a couple weeks ago, when he legit got knocked the fuck out by mm. Pac, dude. That man, that man deserves a world title. Oh, he, he, I'm not it, saying again, just proves him. WWE does nothing with him and he goes to AW and is like one of the most legit wrestlers. Yes. Yeah. AEW and AEW is thrifty. That really they are because they, they get like shine it up and make it awesome. They're not really trash, but no. they, to WWE, they're just like, oh, this isn't good enough. I don't know what to do with that. Because you don't you don't have to fill in a box like right they're like what what style like what how do you wrestle all right and what what did you think gimmick you can do and let's make that work instead of being like here's a thing you're gonna do and yeah. probably not be good at yeah and see that's the thing with like when they do these call-ups man from nxt to the main roster oh, like God, alistair talked about that did, did you hear did you hear him talk I did. about we, it we watched we watched a little bit of his uh twitch stream where he like revealed his entrance music that he was supposed to have which was mm. bad as fuck by the way um those vignettes were cool. Oh yeah, dude. Absolutely. With like the the animated like the construction paper cutouts or whatever. It was really cool. Yeah, like you know they they How they is that don't... not going to be over? It was the, the, it was guaranteed success. Yeah, and that's the thing, dude, like they when they call these guys up, they don't necessarily it doesn't seem like they have anything a plan. already set up for them. They're just like, "Oh, hey, come on over. We'll just throw you by yourself or we'll throw you Rick with ricochet. You guys can do a thing for a month and then everybody's left in the fucking like, dark. Who really had they taken from a call up? Bianca. I mean, Bianca. Bianca. So Bianca. The women's division is a different Rhea. story. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Cause I don't, I don't Except think. Ember. <laughs> oh, she went back. Same thing with Balor. They did stuff with Balor for a little bit. Then he got injured and they did nothing. Then he went back. And that's that's something else that we didn't talk about, dude. What what the fuck is Finn gonna do? I know he wants to go back to the main roster, but mm, I think he's gonna, gonna be on NXT the for a little longer. I, I, there there's a program I'm sure after Takeover when you know when the world title picture settles a little bit. Right now, like everybody's in the world title picture, so yeah, you know yeah. when you free up like your your Garganos and your Duns and everybody, uh, there's something for Balor. There is. I just, I just hope that if he does go back to the main roster, like he didn't ever really get a big push, dude. Like he won the universal title, got injured, was yep. out for a while. Won the IC title. The IC title. That's it, dude. And then after against that, Lashley, against Lashley, which was good for him because you know. But uh, then he got nothing good. after that. Yeah, and it's it's fucking Finn Balor, dude. One of the, exactly. one of the best exactly. wrestlers in the world right now. If they're smart and they take him to the main roster, they can have... Well, no. Hey, think about this. If Joe does come to NXT, you can have Balor and Joe. That would be a fucking odd, dude. They always tore it up together, man. Exactly. They put on some great matches. There's potential there because, like, you have Joe come in and beat Karrion, and that's when Balor comes back, and then you do this program. As the demon... Uh, You could do a match where Balor loses to Joe, and then he comes back as the demon. Yeah. That's what I was hoping for with Carrion, and he didn't do it. Yeah. I've been waiting for a hot minute to see the team in again. And no, yeah. I'm like, Balor, what are you doing? You need to win this. But That's this, too much work. this whole Prince <laughs> thing, dude, like, since I started watching wrestling again, you know, 
mm. four or five years ago, you know, got into it like I used to. Uh, this is the best version of Ballard that well, I've ever seen. This is the gimmick he had when he was in Japan with right. the Bullet Club. Right. And so and that's, they, th- this is a gimmick he knows and he knows how to work. Uh, he's so. killing it, dude. I, I fucking I love Finn's work. Because as, as, a, as a baby face, he doesn't have that same energy. Like, no. he's, he's not necessarily a heel. He's like in the middle ground of like, he may shake your hand. He may punch you in the face. It doesn't, yep. you don't never know what he's going to do. It's and I like that. <laughs> yeah. I love it though, dude. Like yeah. Finn is, it's brilliant. Finn is, I think he's in his prime of his career right now. Yeah. Because he's like, he's, he's like a grizzled veteran, but he's still young enough to be able to pull off these, these great matches. Yeah. So he's not, he's, he's still in that middle spot of his career. He hasn't gone, gone over yet. Yeah. Uh, which and I'm also waiting to see what they do with Champa now that because I know that uh, Thatcher came back, yeah. So you know they could team them what back were up. Calling him? What were they calling Thatcher? Toothless Timmy. Toothless Timmy. <laughs> I love him now. Toothless Timmy. He's great. And then that's Champa always makes a team out of someone he beats the shit out of for like two months. Yeah, it, yeah it's, it's, it's true. Pretty brilliant. Yeah, uh, that's how he screens his tag partners. <laughs> Well, we, we beat the shit out of each other for, you know, two months. Let's just, uh, we'll, we'll have Come a Come together. We'll beat the shit out of other people. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? There should be a rule, though, that um, Champa cannot get in the ring with Karrion Cross ever again. <laughs> I get so worried that he's going to hurt him. Yeah, like drop him on Here. his neck or something. Like, the yeah, guy, I mean, you, you can't drop Champa on his neck. Him. Right. I, I can't watch it. Yeah. Too much. Like, I, <laughs> he's. He's got a baby. <laughs> Champa, Champa worries me when he wrestles. Not because I'm not worried about him per se. It's just I don't want somebody to, like that match with him and Walter, dude. I was fucking terrified. Uh, he was that taking the bumps. Bump. He dude, was taking all the bumps. I was like, you're gonna break his fucking neck again, man. Like, chill the fuck out, you know. We we haven't seen Walter in a minute either. No. Nope. Which I, I know he's usually on UK. Like he very rarely comes to the main roster, but like we haven't seen any of his his crew in Imperium in a minute. No, because well, they, uh, they kicked the out Wolf. Well, he's he's gone. Yeah, he, they they let him go. Uh, Even though they just they just got him. Yeah. And then they were like, "And eh, now you go, get out of here." Yeah. They were teasing something between him and Killian. Yeah. There could and have then, been a new sanity. But... I I think Killian's gonna be next on the chopping block, honestly. Do you think so? I think so. I'm he's gonna stay in because he he had to beg for his job back. But I I think I think Dane's coming up. I don't know, man. He could be uh he could be in this next wave of people. I was like, it's hard to tell who's gonna. I mean, because uh, I didn't ever guess Braun Strowman would have got released. I didn't even more than I, Alistair. I Alistair, I guessed Alistair. I did, didn't I? Well, I, I, I I only didn't because they just started doing this new thing. So I was like, well, they're at least going to have like a program with this new gimmick. No. They, <laughs> they just started kicked, to. They kicked Big E in the head and then they yeah. ignored it. Then they never talked about it again. Yep. Like. <sighs> I thought he was going to be released. And you're like, no, they just did all that. And they've been doing promos and blah, blah. Well, because common sense w- would indicate that you're not going to release someone you just spent all this right, money on. Been- Right, exactly. You've been building up this father of lies shit for like a month. I knew he was gone when they didn't do a match or anything that fall. Yeah, that's SmackDown. Yeah, because you said he was supposed to have a match. Yeah, right? him and Big E were scheduled to have a match, and then they cut it. Yeah, because he they fired him. Because they, they probably knew, like, ooh, we got to get ready to let this guy go. They fired him after they skipped him. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's how I knew. It was like the next oh. week. Still, that that... Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing that's pissed me off is them letting letting go of Alistair. And, and like, sucks, but with Alistair, if they'd have released him when he was just sitting at home, I, I it would have been sad, but I would it would have made sense. I'm like, well, you know, I haven't seen him on TV. Yeah, yeah, I'd have been like, yeah, like, but now he'll go to AW. But it's like now, it's like the you got his hopes up. He even says it in in his in his there, like I had put all this work in, so I thought like there's no way. That it's gonna be me because we're doing all the stuff. He goes, and he just get the call. Then he goes, I'm at the gym, and they call me and they're like, Oh, hey, by the way, like we're gonna let you go. We don't exactly know why. It's Budget cuts. They, they didn't even tell him that at first. They're like, We don't no. know why. It's just happening. And he's like, yeah. Oh, okay. 
And he's like, what but, about but all this work we did? And they're like, yeah, we're just going to go a different direction. And he's like, so oh, as, as much as it sucks that he did get released, I think. He said he was relieved. Yeah, I, I think he. Well, now he doesn't have to worry about like, what WWE is going to do with them. He can go somewhere else that that he knows will do something with them, and he can actually do what he wants to do, which is wrestle. Yes. Yep. That's all he's wanted to do, and you just have him fucking sitting wherever. Like, could you Somebody imagine else. if him and Pac tied it up? Oh, dude, dude, that would be a fucking amazing match. Him, or him I and wanna Pentagon. See, I want to see Alistair yeah. and Chris Jericho. <laughs> Alistair That's, could have a good match with anybody. He really can. So yeah, funny. he whoever he works with, it is, it's it's going to be a good match. Somebody else I didn't think of um, that could potentially be on the fucking chopping block that we haven't seen in a while is Mr. Keith Lee. Oh, yeah. He's- oh, he's for sure going to be on the chopping block soon because yeah, they yeah. purposely – made riddle win the u.s title instead of him it was supposed to be keith lee yeah because they put morrison in that match instead of keith lee like yeah. the night of and he's just been way he's been backstage most of the raws and they just yeah. have not done anything with him yeah so uh, i i which I again another nxt call the guy was north american champion and nxt champion at the same time he was killing it yeah and you're just like bad ah, whatever it's fine we don't need him yeah and look at like Dijakovic. They put they teamed him up with Mace. <laughs> Dijakovic. Oh, they they were in the Royal. We didn't even talk about them in the Battle yeah. Royal. What's the talk yeah. about? Why did they put the face paint on? Like, why don't they? Yeah, like you've already been. What well, I mean, there's really no point in demasking anyway. We know what your face look like. Like you're not fully. Right. And their their whole thing is like you don't know what we're gonna do, and it's like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and um, like. I don't know, dude. And Dijakovic is a guy who could tear it up in the ring. I don't Absolutely. know much. About, I, don't, I don't know much about Mace, but I I, I know Dijakovic is amazing. Mace is a commentator, right? That got beat up by Brock. Oh, really? Yeah. I think so. That. I think so. Yeah. Think He's a he big was. guy, though. I understand yeah. why they want to do something with him, but, but I I feel real bad for Slapjack. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, that that's Shane Thorne. Yeah, I don't know. Like, what is he on? Smackdown? He's supposed to be him, yeah, and but the, to, like, ever, ever since the uh Andre the Giant Battle Royal, we have not seen him at all. Oh, yeah. he's next, and Mia because of Keith. Mm, there, yeah, there's rumors though that Mia is gonna get in a program with Bianca, like they're gonna move her to SmackDown. Cool. I'd like to see that use her because like that. Mia is really good in the ring, she's right? awesome, dude. So, yeah. SmackDown, but they haven't used it. Yeah, so I think they're going to use her with Bianca after this whole Bailey thing settles. That's what the rumor is, but I, I haven't heard cool. much about it since I heard it like a few weeks ago. I love the HBIC. That would be cool. I'd like to see Mia do something. She's good. But yeah, that has yet to be seen because we know Vince loves to start to do something yeah. and then not do it. Especially when it comes to former we're NXT gonna, talent. We're going to we're going to we're going to write the script and then uh 2 minutes before the show starts, I'm just going to rip it up. Well, the draft is coming post SummerSlam. Oh fuck! So oh, the, they're firing everybody. Yeah, <laughs> you're thinning out your roster. So is a is a draft even really fucking gonna needed? We're gonna draft referees. Because <laughs> they move them around. Pat McAfee. <laughs> We're putting you back to NXT. Cool. Do it. Will the draft that. feature NXT? I don't know. It did last time, didn't it? No. I don't think so. It was Raw's SmackDown. Last year. They did one the year before. No, but I, I would like to see another, like, the major Raws. main brand NXT Survivor Series. That was fucking cool. Yeah, the, the one time they did that, it was really That was good. bad as fuck, dude. And NXT dominated. There you go. There's your top fucking dog right there, NXT. Well, fuck technically, the Smackdown. top dog is Roman Reigns. Ugh. Which there, there also is rumors that he wants to do more acting and stop right. wrestling as much. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay, bye. Just need a break from him for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I, because I love that. every time he comes back, they're like, and world title. Throw it right on him. Yep. I, I, I'm, I'm, just, around. I'm still salty that, you know, Roman oh, just God. came out of nowhere, beats up fucking Bray. Goldberg, of all fucking people. Beats Bray also, in two Beats minutes. Bray. Come the fuck on now. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know when you mention Goldberg, that Joe gets he mad. He has a Goldberg somewhere. 
Uh, <laughs> I, I, no, I didn't throw him away. He's just, he's up on the top he's a of the shelf laying down. <laughs> he's in the shame shelf. I'm fucking mad. He should not. That should not I have been totally a thing. I should totally hit the action figure and make it play music. <laughs> no. Give me the glare I gave you for your stupid decision. <laughs> <laughs> But but no tomorrow tomorrow we'll see who who walks away with our AWF title. Uh, You're looking at him, bro. I don't know, Joe. I don't trust your picking abilities. <laughs> Are you gonna pick Carrion? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm not. <clears throat> I am. Okay, you heard it here. Amber is gonna not pick Carrion. So if she tries to pick Carrion tomorrow, with. I'm telling her no. I know who she's going with. Somebody she claims to fucking hate. Adam Cole. Yep. I mean, he I'm is going. a tremendous wrestler. Oh, yeah. No, Although, man. I think if him and Britt stay together, I think he might eventually go to AEW. Yep. Of, I, you know, that's you what I think, think the too. the women's champion there. <laughs> so let's that title. I see them posing with it. <laughs> the yeah, tiny it, AEW women's. The that's tiny. the one thing AEW doesn't do right is belts. No. It's small enough for him. They need- He's a little guy. <laughs> What is your beef with Adam Cole? She, dude, I don't know. I don't know what it is. She cannot stand Cole. I don't know why. He's like a Shawn Michaels ripoff. He looks like Shawn Michaels. But he's 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 so so good. Fucking good. You have to look at him for his talent. I've been watching him since Ring of Honor. The guy's fucking down. He's so he's he's phenomenal. He's even a good Uno player, as we see in Up Up Down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been watching that lately. It's really funny. Their Uno episodes are great. I love their Mario. The Mario shit's funny Mm. as fuck, dude. Bree's getting so pissed off. (laughs) And then also, I've been watching a lot of Shayna Baszler's like video things. I didn't know she lived with Dakota Kai and uh, that really that one she Jessamyn Duke. She was on Raw Underground. Yeah, they all live together. No shit. I did not know that. Because, like, I, I was watching her vlog, and then she starts talking to Dakota Kai. I'm like, is that Dakota Kai? And she turns wow. the camera a little bit. And I'm like, it is Dakota Kai. And they start talking about, like, roommate shit. I'm like, oh. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, man. Who was it that said that he lived with um, Tyler Breeze? Sean uh, Spears used to live with Tyler oh, Breeze. And yeah, then uh, yeah. Z- Xavier Woods used to live with Tyler Breeze a long time ago, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. They yeah. were making jokes about it. I was like, what? Yeah. But uh, yeah, Sean Sean Spears and Tyler Breeze have a wrestling school together. That's cool. Really cool. Oh yeah. Even though they're on two different different companies. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, you, you're gonna make friends no matter where you're at. You know, well, you're still gonna have old friends. Everybody who came up through FCW, which turned into NXT, those guys are all tight because, yep. like, they had to. They were they were ring crew. They sold concessions, T-shirts, and wrestled. They said the only the only way you know you were in a match is if your ring music hit, and then you'd have to run from where you oh, were in the yeah. building to get in the ring and wrestle someone random. Yeah, that's crazy. Man. So that's crazy. So that's gonna do it for this installment. Uh, join us next time. We'll talk about more wrestling stuff. Uh, I think Bean's gonna be with us next time. Um, yep. gonna, gonna, probably gonna if he's still champion, he's definitely gonna be wearing it. Champion couldn't show up. <laughs> He Brock Lesnar did, or no? He, he just got called out, bro. In in our company, he DJed it because that's what DJ oh. does. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so until next time, stay safe and stay nerdy. And the recording.